Hi, welcome to the Black Bill. Ah, conservative commentator Bill Crystal with a K. Um, thinks we shouldn't protest outside Supreme Court justices' houses. And uh, my first reaction to that is a great big fat middle finger that in, in the interest of good taste I won't show you right now. Um, hating Trump, you know, being against Trump, doesn't make you on the good side. Bill Crystal is still a conservative. He still believes in small government and uh, so-called fiscal responsibility and all of these things that uh, treat minorities and the disadvantaged as though everything were already equal in America. So, uh, not a good dude trying to insinuate yourself on the left as being on our team because you don't like your party's current leadership doesn't make you uh, uh, the hero or a working class hero or anything like that. So we can safely ignore. What I want to get to is um, do, 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 uh, privileged white people really don't get to tell other people how and where and when to protest. It, uh, if, if the people being subjugated by power have to check with that power how it's acceptable for them to express their needs and wants and desires from government, then the people in power can just say they can only protest in ways that are irrelevant and easily ignored. So when people, Bill Crystal certainly not alone, uh, so many even well-meaning, even leftist white men telling other people how to protest, uh, we can just... We can just let that go. Um, what I want to say is that we should, in fact, be protesting at Supreme Court justices' houses. We should be doing that. And there are a number of reasons. Uh, protest is integral to democracy. All right? Protest is absolutely integral to democracy. Protest corrects for when democracy is failing. Because it's too slow, for example. Um, we don't have term limits. Name recognition is the number one reason that people would be reelected. And so both Congress and the Senate are full of people who are, let's say, superannuated. Uh, they're elderly. They are living the values of the 1960s and 70s and sometimes the 1980s. And we can call them up on the telephone and tell them that values have changed and they should listen to their grandkids and so on, but they won't really hear that message unless that message is said loud, unless it's said by, observably, thousands and thousands of people in the street with signs and uh, the power to make a mess of things for a while, right? As noted family therapist Carl Whitaker liked to say, affect lubricates process. So there's just one example. And this isn't a real democracy. Our democracy is failing. What do I mean by that? All the stuff I said in the video why I voted for Joe Biden. Uh, if you're in North Carolina, it's basically a 50-50 toss-up if you vote blue or red team. But red team controls 90% of the state senate and the state congress and 75 percent of their delegates to the national congress are republicans right if you're a democrat you're underrepresented because the republican controlled government drew the line so your vote wouldn't count there's really absolutely no point in voting under those circumstances but this is still at least in name in principle a democracy and so to get your way you might have to to get represented you might have to do some stuff other than voting you might have to turn up at the park with some signs and some banners you might have to get news coverage you might have to shame some people publicly. You might have to pick it outside a few court buildings and disrupt proceedings until you are heard, until someone agrees to make a change. So locally, we got a Citizens Police Accountability Board. We protested, we made noise, and the city government 
allowed a a civilian commission, a non-police citizens commission, that's going to review all the cases and review our uh, racial equity and so forth in a local police force. You can get change, you can get democratic change, even when you're not properly represented in the government through protest. Uh, the current makeup of the Supreme Court is heavily skewed to the right. It's not only just skewed to the right, it's skewed toward one particular corner of the, of the right. These are the constitutional originalist people who want to put the government back to pre-Civil War standing, right? The Federalist Society, these are the guys who believe that states are independent, sovereign nations, and the federal government cannot override the laws of independent, sovereign nations. So, human rights would depend on the state, the nation, that you live in. The federal government would have very limited authority to establish nationwide, coast-to-coast -coast civil rights. This is the thing that fundamentally changed during the American Civil War, is that states are no longer considered independent, sovereign nations, and the federal government can, in fact, legislate civil rights for everyone that can't be violated. It doesn't depend exactly where in America you stand. So the Roe versus Wade thing is about repealing federal power back to this pre-Civil War era, and state by state, we're going to lose rights that we've had for, for 50 or so years. 50 or so years, and there's no reason under that model that we couldn't lose the rest of our rights as well, because individual states decide that speaking a language other than English in public is a crime, for example. <sighs> the Supreme Court is not elected. Their composition is so heavily skewed. Six Republican appointees and three Democratic appointees um, it's so heavily skewed because our democracy is foundering. Um, neither Bush Jr. nor Trump won the popular vote. But between them, they put, what is it, four or five of those people on that body? Trump exclusively put those foundation members on, and all six Republican appointees are current or former members of that organization. Ah. <sighs> You can't vote them out. They have lifetime appointments. The decisions they make now are forever. Except for right now, for some reason, when they think it's okay to undo a 50-year super precedent, what the Supreme Court says is the law. Have you ever read the Constitution? No. Not unless you've read the Constitution and every relevant court case. Because the way that the Constitution is interpreted in particular by the Supreme Court, but also by other federal courts, changes the Constitution. It doesn't change the words in the Constitution. It changes the meaning of those words. So, for example, that Second Amendment, my lefty buddies like to say, the Second Amendment does not guarantee the right to bear arms. It guarantees the right to bear arms as part of a well-organized militia. And I'm like, 2012 Supreme Court decision, bitches. Right? That Supreme Court decision changed the meaning of the Second Amendment so that it was the individual right to bear arms. And that's forever. That's forever. The Supreme Court, at least the functional Supreme Court doing its job the way it's always done it, won't go back and change that precedent, won't go back and reinterpret the Second Amendment so that it has its original constitutional meaning. Ironically, it's only the constitutional originalists who seem to think that's okay to do, to change precedent, in ways that deviate, deviate from the original constitutional meaning. So those guys are not, a, not elected, they have lifetime appointments, they're appointed by people who don't represent America, they haven't won a, those appointers have not won a popular vote. 
They've won through national level gerrymandering, let's say. Um, small states have as many senators as large states, and just all, just all the just all the hundred ways that. Um, the, the number of delegates per state, it's not always updated. Very small states have a minimum number of delegates, and uh, wonky stuff, like in Texas, they shut down all but one uh, uh, ballot drop-off in the big city down there, in the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area, and left all of the individual drop-offs open all through the rural place where, you know, the black people in Texas would vote in the city, and they would have to line up for hours and hours and hours to get that done, and, right, for all these reasons, the president isn't always the person who represents where America is at a given time. Democrats really only ever win by winning the popular vote. And Republicans keep winning by this sort of gamesmanship of just getting the states with the most delegates and not the states with the most people or the most popular sentiment. Uh, so only a, a small number of people, only 8% of Americans would want abortion to be illegal in all circumstances, always, right? With no exceptions ever. And the Supreme Court would really kind of like that to be the case. And they're enabling decisions by states who do want that to be the case. So what can you do? You can't vote them out in the next election. You can't even vote for representatives who will vote to protect Roe versus Wade. That bill went down in the Senate last night. Even that was going to be a weird stopgap because you could make it... Uh, make it the national law that abortion is free and accessible, but that's no longer in the Constitution. It's no longer contained under the Privacy Clause of Article of uh, Amendment 1. Um, which means that a Republican Senate could just repeal it in the next term, right? Uh, so... <sighs> The Republicans are almost always, like, four out of six years, basically, are going to have majorities in the House and in the Senate. And there's a chance for Democrats to take back those majorities some of those two out of six-year periods. Which means that you can't just vote for your representatives to vote your interests. Which means that protest is the thing. When democracy, democracy is flawed or failing or not sufficiently responsive, then you have to make noise and directly communicate what it is that you want to your local government. Republicans understand this perfectly well. Uh, they whipped up weird, deluded, frenzied mobs to attack school boards over masks, over the things preventing the transmission of COVID, over vaccines, and over... Uh, critical race theory, which is not taught in K through 12 schools. This is an explicit attack to associate Democrats with wokeness. And the guy who invented the whole thing will tell you that in his own words. The people yelling at the school boards and whipping everyone else up were Republican activists with Republican activist organizations, and you can look them up too. Right? That's called astroturfing, making a thing seem like a, like a popular groundswell. So when voting doesn't work, you got to take to the streets. We could protest the Supreme Court. Sure. People could stand outside the Supreme Court with their signs and their banners and their air horns and whatever and make a bunch of noise and a bunch of ruckus. The thing is that, for their own safety, the Supreme Court has ordered a buffer zone so that people cannot, in fact, protest effectively outside the Supreme Court. They're so far away, they can't cause any particular inconvenience, and I doubt they could even be heard from inside of the building. Totally ineffective. So what's left to do? What's left to do? You could protest at the state capitol, you could protest the House of Congress, and those people just don't care. Um, they don't represent us. They represent their constituents in their individual districts. No, not really. They represent the 
furthest right wing constituents in those districts. The, 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 the noise of discontent is music to their ears. What's left to do? If you, if you want uh, Justice Alito to hear you, you have to go to his house. You have to go stand in the street outside his house, make his life inconvenient. Shout. <clears throat> Is that going to change his mind? Uh, you know, they have really telegraphed that they're not about to change their minds. Um, that being swayed by public opinion would in their minds be some sort of betrayal, betrayal of their betrayal of their job and their office. You know, I, I would try not to be swayed by public opinion too much as well. If I thought the law said a thing, that's the thing I would try to do. But if I were sent into that lifetime appointment by a fascist minority, I would be really, really careful about things like upending 50 years of precedent. And these guys seem to be doing this for pretty much overtly political reasons. All right, last comment I've seen. Uh, what if Republicans were protesting outside of Democrat-appointed Supreme Court justices? There would be an outrage. And yes, I imagine there would be an outrage because the, the Supreme Court justices appointed by Democrats right now is Katanji Brown Jackson, who's a black woman, and um, Sotomayor, and uh, Elena Kagan. So to my or, you know, a minority, Kagan, lesbian. And so you're going to protest outside the houses of vulnerable minorities. <sighs> vulnerable minorities, yeah. With positions, with individual power, but who are members of those vulnerable minorities who are already targets of so much hate. And Republicans are the ones who have that bumper sticker that says, the Second Amendment guarantees all of your other rights, right? The right to bear arms guarantees all of your other rights. So when they show up to protest Supreme Court justices' houses, they show up fucking armed. They show up armed. So yes, there would be outrage. So that's all I have to say about that.